If you've seen any Overland, <clears throat> if you've seen any Overland van, RV, or car camping builds, you've seen 12 volt fridges. They're useful because they're small, efficient, and work with 12 volt power systems that are in basically all vehicles. They're designed to be used on the move, away from our unlimited power supply in the home. So that begs the question, how much energy does it use? Will you need a second battery? How big of a battery? If you run it all night, will your car start in the morning? These are some of the questions I tried to figure out with this experiment. I'll be measuring the fridge's power demands every hour for 12 hours, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., or something like that. I'm tracking kilowatt hours. It's a measure of energy consumed over time. With that data, we should be able to estimate the size of the battery we need for a day of keeping food cool while in a hot car. As you can imagine, power demand is dependent on the ambient temperature. Power consumption will be significantly less at night or on cooler days, maybe even half as much. So this is really a worst case scenario test. A quick disclaimer, to use the meter I have I need to plug the fridge into a wall outlet. This requires an AC to DC adapter, which was included, and according to the internet, uses 20 to 30% more energy to work. We'll subtract this at the end to get a more accurate figure. Let's get on with the test. So I'm gonna put it in the car, plug it in with an extension cord, and measure how much energy it uses. Everything's plugged in. This measures how many watts it uses, how many kilowatt hours, how many amps. But yeah, I think I want to have, I want to know kilowatt hours the most. We're starting at 9.30 a.m. I'm going to set the fridge. For the record, it's going to be, uh, it's a high of 80 degrees today. I'm going to crack the windows about an inch, inch and a half. Just the back two. It turned on. Gonna set it to setting it to 35 degrees. And that's the current temperature 57, 59. If you can hear it, we know it's running for sure. Close it up, we'll check back in a bit. In the meantime, let's have some breakfast. Okay, so the time is 10.30. It's pulling one watt. It has used 0 0.055 kilowatt hours so far. The reason it said one watt right now is because refrigerators cycle on and off. The compressor doesn't always need to be running. Pulling one watt again. Forgot to say, it's 11.30 so it's getting hotter. It says it's 77 degrees out right now. It's pretty toasty in here. Let's go for a ride real quick. Four thirty. We've used point two seven eight. Okay, 5.30. As you can see, we've been going for almost eight hours total. 
I've used right on the dot 0.3 kilowatt hours. You can't see, but the sun's went down now. It's been 10 hours, and we've used 0.355 kilowatt hours. So we're past the hardest part of the day. It's probably not going to use that much more energy. But I'll turn it off in two more hours, so we get a full 12 hours in. It's 10 p.m., and it has officially been going for 12 hours, and that's how much energy we've used. 0.379 kilowatt hours. Okay, so according to my calculations, food is still cold. Here's what we found out. One day of refrigeration in nearly the hottest possible circumstances used 0.379 kilowatt hours, so 379 watt hours. Since batteries are usually rated in amp hours, we need to do a quick conversion. Using some highly advanced electrical maths, we can divide our watt hours by our voltage to reach our amp hours, because amp hours equals watt hours over volts. There's a website in the description that can do this math for you if you want. 379 watt hours divided by 12 volts equals 31.58 amp hours. The fridge used about 32 amp hours in our 12 hour test period. Again, this is on a hot day with minimal ventilation on top of our 20 to 30 percent energy loss from the AC to DC conversion. That means in real world circumstances, we used between 20 and 25 amp hours of power. To decide what battery you need depends on how you get your power. If you have solar, you'll need enough power to keep it running until you have the sun to refill your batteries. Luckily with solar, during the heat of the day is when your fridge will need the most energy and when you'll be getting the most energy in from your solar panels. If you're powering the fridge with your car battery or an auxiliary battery, like one of those power stations, you'll just need it to last until the next time you can recharge, whether that's from running your car's engine or plugging into shore power. This will depend on your personal circumstances, so like Socrates said, know thyself. Also keep in mind, AGM batteries have an effective capacity of 50% of their stated size, whereas lithium batteries can use their full capacity. So a 100 amp hour AGM battery is equivalent to a 50 amp hour lithium battery in effective power. I'm running a small closed loop solar and lithium battery setup, so I'll need a moderate amount of storage to be on the safe side. I want to be able to handle two or three days without the sun charging my batteries, just in case I get stuck in bad weather. Based off our findings, I think a 50 amp hour lithium battery will be more than enough. I feel good about that size because I've seen people run 12 volt fridges on 20 amp hour setups, no problem. Some other info I found useful is that basically all 12 volt fridges use the same amount of power. The big ones use only a tiny bit more than the small ones, so don't worry too much about fridge size in your calculations. Also, the more food and drink you have in your fridge, the more efficient it'll run. The food acts like an ice cube in a drink and helps keep the temperature constant. Anyways, that about wraps it up. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Please subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.